We're back in Eugene, Oregon for our coverage of the NCAA Track and Field Championships. Ladies' Day, the next event. Two heats of the women's 1,500 meters. No hurdles. Jenny Berenger, now Simpson, the only collegian to ever go under four minutes. While she was a collegian, and Maya Ramsden is in heat number two. She has the best time in the country this year. But there is Flamina Asicol, the great senior from Florida. And an important piece of Florida's team title hopes at the end of the weekend, a four-time SEC champion and a cross-country All-American. She was the SEC indoor and outdoor champ this year, and she got a really warm reception when she was introduced here at Hayward Field. Claudia Kashmirska, one of two ducks in this first heat. So there are 24 total athletes in each of these events that got here through East and West Regionals. 12 in each of these two 1,500-meter heats, and what they want is a 12-runner final. So in these two heats, the first five finishers across the line will automatically qualify through to Saturday, and then the next two fastest times over the two heats that didn't automatically qualify. So you really want to be in the top five and expend as little energy as possible in these semifinals. And there are a number of NCAA title holders in this first heat, led by Lindsay Butler of Virginia Tech. She won the 800 NCAA title indoors two years ago. Flamina Asical up there as well. But the NCAA champs already, Lindsay Butler has a title. Olivia Howell won the indoor mile when she was competing at Illinois. She's now with Texas. And Riley Chamberlain of BYU, who's right there in the back of the pack, she ran the anchor leg on BYU's national championship winning DMR earlier this year as Flomena Asical goes up to the front, gets out of trouble, takes over the lead from Lindsay Butler. 66 opening 400 meters and Flamina Asicole in a familiar position to us as we've seen her compete quite a few times this year. Likes to control things from the front when she can. Claudia Kazmierski in the green and gold of Oregon in there on the rail. Lindsay Butler behind her. Flo doing a great job of controlling things right up front. She's run a number of 800s, did really sharpen herself up, get her speed underneath her coming into this race. I'd also keep your eyes on Sophie O'Sullivan of Washington. She's kind of in the middle of the pack at this point, but has the far best personal best of this entire field, having competed at last year's World Championships. Juliet Cherubit of Texas Tech, the freshman from Kenya, moving into second spot. And Asako with a little separation there. Let's take a look and see what the half mile time is, or the 800 meter time, I should say. About 108. Oh, excuse me, I should say 212. 68 second lap, looking at the wrong stat. So Asago looking very comfortable up in the front. And again, it's all about being in those top five positions out of these 12 runners to make certain you get through automatically to Saturday. 4088, the fastest qualifying time that we have seen at these national championships. And Flamina Asical is incredibly consistent in how she runs. She is always up front. She always rises to the occasion on the biggest stage, seeing some movement behind her. Kirabek of Texas Tech moving up to that front pack, but led by currently Kazmierska of Oregon as they get to the bell. So that separation remains between Flamina Asical and Lindsay Butler, who is second. Now Kazmierska making a move to make certain she protects her position. This last 300, we'll see a lot of jostling, a lot of repositioning. No one more familiar with the backstretch of this track than Claudia Kazmierska. She's made a number of NCAA 1500 meter meters before, looking to make one here at Hayward Field. And she is on the heels of Flomena Asical to push the pace as they go past the Bowerman Tower. Asikol and Kazmierska, there's room for three more to automatically qualify. And that fifth position is really what's the one that's being contested at this point. There's Shannon Flockhart going into the lead for Providence. If you're in the top five, you just need to cruise through, but that fifth position is definitely contested. Shannon Flockhart winning the heat, 405-97 in a heat. That has got to be 
missing the record for the semifinal by one one hundredth of a second. An outstanding performance, and we never said her name even to the last 200 meters. And you can see here, fantastic 1500 NCAA outdoor champion last year, NCAA indoor champion this past March. Fastest time in the NCAA this year. She makes her a big favorite two-time NCAA champion, and she also competed at the World Indoor Championships. Second fastest time in NCAA history, having run that just a few weeks ago at the LA Grand Prix among a field of professionals. And this is just an elite 1,500 meter com competition. I don't know that we have ever seen more depth in the 1,500 at an NCAA championship than what we have between these two semifinal heats. Well, Jenny Simpson now, uh, Jenny Berenger now Simpson set that collegiate record 15 years ago. She's still the only collegian to go under four minutes. But My Maya Ramsden definitely scared that with her 402.58 just a couple of weeks ago in Los Angeles. She narrowly missed the Olympic qualifying standard in that performance. Eight one hundredths of a second. What a heartbreak. So she is certainly well poised to represent New Zealand at the Paris Olympics. Obviously doesn't yet have that standard, but her credentials incredibly impressive and looking to position herself for a bid to do that 66 seconds. So the first 400, very similar to what we saw in that first heat, thanks to the lead duties of Kimberly May, who just saw her teammate run that blazing time in heat one. They would love to get both Friars into the final. And Kimberly May has been peaking at the absolute Absolute right time. Second fastest time in the NCAA this season behind Ramsden. She ran 4.07 flat at the NCAA qualifying meet in Lexington. So still pretty tightly bunched. Again, you want to be in the top five to automatically qualify through. And this tells me that the pace is not going out quite as aggressively as heat number one, which is going to make the sixth and seventh place finishers in heat number one happy. Also watch North Carolina State Sam Bush, who is currently on the rail. She is a three-time cross-country All-American, a member of that Wolfpack team, those three Wolfpack cross-country teams that pulled off an incredible three-peat just last fall. So she is one who knows about championship racing. That's the thing. We can talk about the performances and the times all season long, but when you get here, it's all about competition and who is on their game when the final day arrives. Well, it turns out they're only a half second off the pace from the first heat, so very possible time qualifiers could be split between the two heats. In talking to Harvard coach Alex Gibby, he said that Maya has really taken advantage of an opportunity to treat herself like a professional. She's able to focus on purely competition right now because all of her academic coursework at Harvard has been wrapped up back in April. She actually had to do an oral defense of her thesis on Pacific poetry and climate change. Very casual. And she goes to the bell lap right up front, and she looks so relaxed with Kimberly May in tow. And then that's Maggie Congdon of NAU who is an NCAA indoor finalist in both the mile and the 800. And they come up with 300 meters to go. Five athletes have separated themselves from the rest. Those are your automatic qualifier if, uh, qualifiers if the race were to finish now. And I don't see anybody making much of a challenge from behind them. A surge to a 64-second last 400 meters. So things have quickened up as that front five has well separated themselves. And of that front five, Maya Ramsden running the quickest and looking the most relaxed in doing so. All of that experience, world stage, world indoor championships, NCAAs as well, all coming to fruition as she looks to repeat as the 1500 meter champion. It's getting a little dicey for fifth place as they're getting to the line. And she hangs in there, just making it. Ramsden narrowly missing the entire meet record. Two tenths of a second off Sinclair Johnson's meet record in the semifinal. But they just won one hundredth of a second slower than the winner of the first heat. So that'll tell you how competitive this event is going to be on Saturday. Maya Ramsden winning the heat, 4.06 flat. And there were no time qualifiers from that 
second heat, so the first heat, sixth and seventh placers will advance. Ramston did a great job of controlling this entire race, staying out of trouble, forcing the field to play her game in this. She looked very comfortable all the way through the finish, and then it got a little exciting behind her with the rest of those two advance on to the final. Two, there will be plenty of competition when we get to Saturday. Two hundredths of a second off the meet record by Maya Ramston. One one hundredth of a second from Heat 1. Here are your advancers to final. The 12 athletes that will contest this race on Saturday where it's supposed to be quite a bit warmer. And on Saturday, we start a lot earlier. It'll be mid-afternoon here on the West Coast. So the conditions are going to be less than ideal, perhaps, for great middle distance and distance running. But there are your qualifiers.